Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 363. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Are you ready to thrive through the storm and understand how stress can impact your mind, body, and the success of your business? Our next guest is an entrepreneur and publicist. Welcome, Lindsay Walker. Thank you for having me. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you'd like them to know about you and your business? Yeah. So my name is Lindsay Walker. I'm a publicist. I run a PR agency called Walker and Associates Media Group, where we amplify the voices of our clients in the beverage, beauty, box office, and business space. And I overall, I love God. I love publicity. I love connecting and meeting new people. And I love sharing my story, but also hearing the stories of other people. Tell us your why. Why do you do what you do? I do what I do for people that for so long have felt unseen, unheard, for people that produce great works in the various industries, but they haven't gotten the recognition that they deserve. Growing up, I was the girl who was always watching award shows, all things entertainment. Like I loved hearing the stories behind some of our our favorite musicians now influencers, so on and so forth. And so that's what really, really sparked my interest and my why behind becoming a publicist and an entrepreneur. How did you get into the industry? Yeah, as I said, like I was always watching the award shows. I was glued to the TV when the Grammys came on and I've always been an avid reader. I love to read. I used to just consume book after book after book you know, specifically in this case, fiction. I had just finished reading a fiction book where one of the characters was a publicist. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds great because I always thought that I wanted to be a journalist. About two weeks after I, you know, finished reading the book, I got the opportunity to participate in the St. Louis chapter minority journalism workshop, the National Association of Black Journalists. And we got to choose between being journalists or being publicists. And I was like, you know what? I want to try out this PR thing. And I fell in love with it. I majored in math comm in college. And then I did a plethora of internships. And once I finished and graduated, I knew that like this was what I wanted to do. Talk about your book, Thriving Through the Storm. Yeah. Thriving Through the Storm is, I'd like to say, the first part of my memoir. It talks about my journey going through stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma, having to endure six months of chemotherapy. So I walk readers through my life before that, my life in the midst of that, and then also my life and and the lessons that I learned while healing and recovering within that process. And, you know, you don't have to have a a cancer diagnosis to read the book or to relate to it. I wrote it for women that have endured and or are currently enduring certain storms and situations so that they could know how to navigate because it's not about what we go through. It's about how we choose to grow and go through it. What was your takeaway from that experience? My first takeaway is that God is real and there's no question within that for me that God is a healer and that by faith, I can conquer anything that is thrown my way. And that doesn't mean when we talk about faith, that doesn't mean that moments are perfect. It just means that we're perfected through those moments and going through certain processes. That was quite a journey for me. 
while I was going through it, it seemed like it would be never ending. And sometimes, no matter the storms that we're facing, sometimes they just seem like it'll never go away. Like, oh, I'll never get out of debt or, oh, I'll never, whatever milestone that we envision because this disruption is in our way. But then you get through it and you're like, that, that's what it was for. There are so many brands and businesses that are dominating. Talk about a brand or a business that's dominating that you admire and why. Yes. So that would hands down be Monique and Melvin Rodriguez of Maya Organics. They just got acquired through Procter & Gamble. It's a brand that I've been following since its start. And I'm so, so very proud of them. I have not I did like a a small snippet with Monique, but we have not worked together. But I just admire the work that they're doing and the heart behind their story. They're leaving so much legacy for so many Black-owned businesses, for so many aspiring Black-owned businesses that you can create a product, you can bring it to market, you can have longevity in the space, and you can do it on your own terms and in your own way. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person, living or not. They've inspired you so much. Who is that person and what are you saying? I think one person comes to mind. And I feel like this is super like, I feel like who I'm about to say is super, super cheesy. But I'm going to say it anyway, because it's just me being authentic to, to who I am since I have the space and the opportunity to do this. It would have to be Beyonce. I feel as though people have taken the talent that she possesses. They've perverted it from a personal standpoint. This is a woman who has been performing since she was nine years old. A woman that's gone through heartache after heartache when we as like fans or, you know, listeners of her music did not even know what she was going through. This is a woman that is consistently day after day. If you Google her, someone has something to say about her, her children, her business, and just taking space when we think about entrepreneurship and we say that we want to reach these high heights right? We say that we want so many of these things, but can we really handle what we're saying that we want? Because this is a person, whether you love her, whether you dislike her, whether you feel whatever type of way, this is a person that consistently gives and gives and gives. And when I say give, I mean, she lends her gifting. And as entrepreneurs, that's what we do. We lend our gifting out into the world. And so, just being able to hold space, even even as I think about the things that I still have yet to accomplish within my lifetime, it's like, can you handle the weight of what that's like? So that is what I would like to say and share about that. Speaking of give, it's give and get. What do you want to give and what do you want to get? If you were to ask me this question years ago, the answer would have been, uh, you know, oh, I want to leave legacy. And, that, and that's great, right? Leaving legacy, we should do that. I'm striving and thriving towards that. But being a stage four cancer survivor and being on the other side of it now, my answer is I want to give all that I have to give. I don't want to leave anything left in terms of what I have to lend from a talent perspective, from a thought perspective, from any perspective. If I have it to give, I want to give it. In return, I think the getting piece, I'm actually still working through. So thank you for asking that question, because I think that that question is equally as important as the giving. But I think I just want to get, I want to get back just love and love being not necessarily from a romantic way, but I, as a person, I am extremely like loving. I have a love and a huge heart for people. And so by my giving, I want to give back all the love that I can, all the generosity that I can, all of the prosperity that God has in store for me. You talk about cancer. Someone's listening. They've just gotten the diagnosis of cancer. What are you saying to them? 
I am saying that you're not alone. You're not by yourself. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken by any any sense of the word. This is now a process and a journey that you have to create and make your own. There will be so many people. They'll have all the advice in the world. They'll tell you what to eat, what to drink, how to speak, what to say, how to think. But you have to embark on the journey your way. Um, and if you are a believer in the way that God leads you to do that, understand that everyone's journey is different and you can go and grow through this process. Take it one step at a time, one moment at a time, sometimes just one second at a time. And this is the moment for you to create space. If you haven't been taking care of yourself, now is the moment where no one else, nothing else matters. It's about you doing what you are led to do in order for you to to heal. You talked about legacy. Lindsay, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? I think I would like to be remembered as someone who gave all that she had to give, as someone who was inspiring as someone who was full of integrity, kept her word, kept the faith, and ultimately pointed people to Christ in everything that she did. Whether you you listen to me on a podcast or whether you hear me speak or whether you work with me as a client, that is how I would ultimately like to be remembered. What is something that we don't know about the PR industry that we should know? I don't necessarily know if this is something that people don't know or don't care to remember. And that is that publicity is a process. It's a process to hire and onboard your publicist. It's a process to get featured. It's a process of pitching. Like it's not an overnight thing. It's not something where you hire a publicist today, you're a millionaire tomorrow. You have to have strategy. You have to partner with your publicist to make your campaign a success. Advice you wish you had followed. I think the only thing that I I wish I would have really taken to heart is that, especially growing up, is that like I matter I matter simply because I'm here. I matter because I'm living, I'm breathing, and that there's nothing that there's nothing or no one that is either above or beneath me. I think that's something that I wish I would have taken a hold to earlier, you know, in my youth. If you lost everything and you had to rebuild in 30 days, what industry and what business and why? I love that question. And the answer is the PR industry, the publicity industry, because I know it like the back of my hand. I know how to, you know, acquire clients. I know what's required to do that. And it's something that is necessary for businesses. It's also something that, again, I have a love and a passion for. So I would just continue the process and rebuild all over again. Someone is vetting a publicist. What advice would you give them? Number one, check the receipts. We are in digital age. Everybody's on Instagram. Everybody's somebody. Everybody, you know, they take pictures with celebrities, so on and so forth. But check the receipts, check the results. After you check the receipts and you check the results, make sure that you listen to their content, whether they've been, you know, on YouTube, their reels, um, watch their content, consume their content, because nine times out of 10, their content is going to show you who they are from a value perspective. So you can see if your value is aligned, even before you get on the phone with them. And two, the other aspect of that is nine times out of 10 within their content, they also will tell you what the investment level is to work with them. And so before you get on a call, you can make sure that you have the budget to do so, to work with them. And then of course, get on the phone, uh, get on Zoom, have a conversation with them, make sure that their goals and what they envision for you is what you envision for yourself and beyond. And uh, that's the advice that I would give. 
What do you need right now that you don't have to move the needle forward? I love, 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 love this question. As a Black-owned business, a minority-owned business, a woman-owned business that was started out of, directly out of college. So I started a little over 10 years ago. And one of the things that's always been a constant for me is funding, right? Many, many of us uh, as as uh, Black entrepreneurs, we lack the same access to funding, right? That our counterparts, our counterparts do. So yes, currently to move the needle forward, we've done well within my business. Um, but in order for us to take it to that next level, funding would be key. But not only funding, also access to a a larger talent pool. I'm always looking for contractors that we can bring on board. Um, I'm currently right now looking to partner with schools at the collegiate level so that we can create. And it's funny, I was just speaking to someone about this today, but I'm really looking to create like an intern to hire program with a school. So I've been reaching out to a couple of career advancement offices in different you know, schools among the HBCU circuit and beyond. But yeah, the, those are the two things that we're in need of. What is your zone of genius? I think I'm great now. Um, so my zone of genius, when I think about that, Dr. Richards, I think of that from two spaces. I think of my zone of genius from an entrepreneurship space, which of course would be garnering publicity for clients, being able to make connections between the marketplace, my client's target audience, and various journalists that I know are sourcing out the stories. But then when I think of my zone of genius from a life perspective, it's having tenacity. It's being able to fall down 150 million times and get back up and do this again and again and again. You talked about funding, access to capital, being undercapitalized. You started 10 years ago, straight out of college. How did you fund your business? Honestly, and I promise you, this is not a cliche answer, but the answer is God. Like, that is how that that's the only way that I've been able to have the experiences that I've had. I'm a first generation entrepreneur. Um, as far as I know, within my immediate family, everyone thought that I would go and, you know, get a job in marketing at AT&T or, you know, some other space, but that wasn't what God had me to do. And so really it's just been God and myself. And that's how I've been able to sustain. I believe in investing in myself 100%. I believe in mentorship and accountability and mastermind and coaching. And I am also a person, I will vet people out. If I can't work with you, you know, within the first 30 to 60 days, I will vet you out until we're ready to go and we're ready to work. And that's just how it's been done. What is your biggest takeaway from our conversation today? What do you want the audience to leave with? I want the audience to leave with, number one, understanding what's possible, understanding that it doesn't matter where you start within your business. It's about how you choose to finish. I want the audience to also take away being mindful of how we treat other entrepreneurs in various sectors and in various spaces, because you don't know what people are enduring behind the scenes. You listen to podcasts like this. You're like, oh, it's great. You know, you're comparing yourself. I literally just posted this on Facebook. Comparison is the number one killer of relationships of any kind. Assumption is the number, the second killer, right? And so being mindful as entrepreneurs, that that's a really, really big key. Don't compare yourself to anyone else's journey. We all have our own. Fill in the blank. Thank you, pandemic, because... Thank you, pandemic, because that is where I was given clarity and structure and I was able to slow down and invest within my business to hit a really big milestone in the business. Speaking of milestones, what is the next stone you want to turn over? Yeah, the next stone that I am going to turn over would be hitting the seven-figure mark. That's the goal for us. That's awesome. 
Talk about your top two influencers or mentors and what lessons do they teach you? My top two mentors. One is a mentor in my head by way of me consuming all of her books, all of her podcasts, all the things. And that is Marshawn Evans Daniels. And she taught me that disruption leads to the destiny that God has for us. And that's a process that I'm still walking through. My second mentor would be Arian Simone. And she taught me to fearlessly be myself, operate in my gifts unapologetically, and to be okay with having my journey just be my journey. Talk to a younger you. What advice would you give to a younger Lindsay? The advice I would give to a younger Lindsay is to slow down. It's okay. You're going to get there. You don't have to rush. You don't have to overthink. And that your thought process determines how fast or how slow you move, not because of other people, but because when your mindset isn't as it should be, you slow yourself down in the process. What problem exists in the world today that you would like to solve? We could be here all day with that one. There's so many. (laughs) I think the biggest problem that exists in the world today that I would like to solve is people have truly gotten away from being kind to one another. We're not kind to each other anymore. We don't have grace. We don't show love. We don't show mercy. We're not understanding. And if I could give all the kindness away, I would, because I think that that's, we can tackle all the issues and all the political things and all of that, right? But it starts with us being willing to understand one another and us being willing to be kind to one another. How do you make impact daily? I make impact daily by showing up in spaces like this, by being able to share some part or some piece of my story, whether that is on Instagram, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, whether it's on a network that I'm a part of called Kingdom Business Network, just in my in my daily encounters and interactions with people, whether it's physically or virtually, that is how I make impact. The word is play. How did you play today or how will you play today? Hmm, I could take that like a couple of different ways. I've never like been stumped by a question. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. So my goal for today and the rest of this week is to like play hard. I have to go hard on a couple of things. But when you ask me that question, it also reminds me like, hey, you can put a little a little play, a little fun into your day. So I'm not quite sure what the fun aspect looks like, but um, maybe I'll, I'll catch some time to just scroll on, on TikTok or watch a bit of a 20 minute show or something on Netflix. What does self-care look like for Lindsay? Self-care looks like, as I have it, creating space within my schedule, within my calendar, whether that means I take seven days off or whether that means that I take 30 minute breaks or an hour lunch break, really taking time out to talk to God, to pray, to meditate, to just check in with myself and like see how I'm feeling. And then Of course, you have your leisure self-care things like going to get a massage, uh, going out to eat, things of that nature, but also making sure that I have and I'm sticking to a part of my self-care journey, which is for me therapy, making sure that I'm going to the doctor. All of those things are in Lindsay's self-care arsenal. Talk about mental wellness and entrepreneurship. Oh. That's like a whole other podcast episode, right? You know, no one tells you exactly what's required, the mental capacity and tenacity that you have to take, that you have to endure, that you have to learn to master 
when you become an entrepreneur. If someone's listening and you're an entrepreneur and you feel stuck and you feel isolated and you're not talking to a therapist on a regular basis, please do so. As much as we love our friends, they don't have the answers. They're trying to figure it out. They don't have the coping mechanisms, uh, the skills to do so. Make sure that along your entrepreneurship journey, you're definitely taking care of yourself mentally because that's how you avoid burnout, mental breakdowns, and all of those things. So it's extremely, extremely important. What have you not done in life that you dream about often that you would like to do? There are a couple of things in that. So let's see, I have not yet been a voice actor. That's something I want to tap into. I also have not yet traveled outside of the country. That's something that I'll do soon. What is your best discovery in life or business? This is probably going to sound extremely egotistical, but I have an explanation after I say it. I think my best discovery in both business and life would be me, like myself, because I didn't know what I was capable of until I became an entrepreneur. I didn't know what was possible for me. I didn't know what some of my own like self red flags or some of my own like, ooh, I need to fix this, 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 and this. Like I didn't know those things. I wasn't aware of those things until I became an entrepreneur. So I would say myself, my mindset was the best discovery. And then honestly, community. Having a community, being an entrepreneur is so, so very important. What brings you joy? Seeing my family members smile and laugh. And when we're able to gather together, being able to connect with my friends uh, who've become family, whether that means that we pray, whether that means that we're just able to just sit and just be goofy and like laugh, seeing other young men and women and just people in general win and accomplish their goals and defeat the odds. That is what brings me joy. What breaks your heart? When people are unkind, when they Instead of understanding or trying to understand another person's viewpoint, they tear it down. It breaks my heart to hear about senseless violence and killings of young men and women and children. Of course, anytime I hear anyone having a cancer diagnosis or any illness, those are also things that break my heart. Let's take a snapshot of the last 30 days. What was your biggest win? My biggest win was thriving through the storm of entrepreneurship in the past 30 days. (laughs) And how do you celebrate your wins? It depends. So, you know, of course, I have to give thanks and honor to God. In addition to that, I may, you know, call a friend, share the news, give myself a a, a pat on the back, take myself out to eat or do nothing at all, (laughs) which is rare. But if I get a chance on weekends, I'll try to just sit and sleep in. And now these days, sleeping in for me is like waking up at 8 (laughs) a.m. What is your top priority for next week? My top priority for next week is Number one, checking in with myself, uh, looking at, you know, just where we are within the month. We have a couple of client projects, so I need to make sure that those go smoothly next week. And uh, yeah, just making sure everything within the business is running as it should. So top priority for me. And what can we do right now to support your book and your business? Yeah, definitely. If you guys want to go and grab the book on Amazon, you can definitely do so. Just type in Lindsay, that's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R, Thriving Through the Storm. You can support the business. Definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Instagram. Instagram is like my favorite platform. I'm just now starting to get into LinkedIn too, but you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at Lindsay A. Walker on Instagram and check out the website. It's Walker, A-S-S-O-C, mediagroup.com. Speak to the person in your lineage 
that has given you the most profound advice? That is definitely more than one person. I have three amazing, actually four. This is what happens when you start counting people. I have amazing women in my immediate family and in my circle who have just poured so much into me. And I'm so grateful because I recognize that without God and without them, I would not be the woman that I am today. And I wouldn't have had the strength to become the entrepreneur that I'm becoming. So I'm super grateful. Talk about business continuity. What is your highest risk as a business owner? Highest risk as a business owner. I was just having this conversation with someone not too long ago, and I was sharing with them that I have come to the realization that I am indeed a risk taker. So that means that there are times when I've made investments before I have taken care of my my home. That means that I have took a, a, a gander, a gamble, a bet, if you will, on pouring all that I have from a financial standpoint, from a mental standpoint into my business. And, and that's a huge risk because it comes at a cost. And sometimes that means that, you know, I don't see my family or my friends very often, even if I live in the in the same city, which also means that we need to do a, a, a boundary reset, another conversation, right? But ultimately, that's a very, a very high risk of entrepreneurship is your timing risk. You're pouring your all into something and you're like, oh. Is it going to work out? Is it working out this month? What are we doing? And so, yeah, I would say that's the biggest and highest risk. If someone spent a whole day with you, what is something they would learn about you that they did not know? I think a lot of people would be extremely surprised to learn that I am a very goofy person, believe it or not. I love to laugh. I love to have fun. I love to just be. I'm a homebody. And I have a very interesting sense of humor. And I'm extremely fluent in uh, sarcasm. Talk about love, relationships, and running a business. Again, catch me for part two of the podcast. But now, love and relationship and running a business, those are all things that require work. And I think that sometimes we look at the lovey-dovey phases of of being in relationship and we're like, oh, it's great. It's great until you have to cancel things and the person has to understand that. So it, it takes a very, very strong individual to be in a, a relationship with an entrepreneur, especially if they are not an entrepreneur because There has to be a a lot of adjusting, a lot of moving parts, but it it very is, it's very well possible to be in a loving, fulfilling relationship and run a business. You just have to prioritize your time. Lindsay, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. Lindsay, throughout all of the experiences, both good and bad, that you've endured, is it worth it? And how do you keep going? And the answer is yes, it's worth it a hundred times over. No matter how frustrating things may be, no matter how impatient I may be at times for certain things to come into fruition or for them to move, it's worth it 100% because of the work that I get to do and the results within that work. And I keep going because of my faith. I keep going because I want to see like how far we can go. I keep going because I know that one day there will be eyes that I will have to answer to as far as what I did with my life and how I did it. And I want to be able to say that this is the blueprint. This is it. Becoming Lindsay Walker. Talk about that. Becoming Lindsay Walker is a an ever-evolving journey. Becoming Lindsay Walker requires learning how to consistently adapt and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. 
learning to get rid of negative thoughts, negative mindset, any instances or residue of rejection. Becoming Lindsay Walker is a daily work. We've come to the part of our interview. It's called Fun Facts Lightning Round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and I'd like you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the Fun Facts Lightning Round? I think so. Yes. Bring it on. (laughs) Your first job. Six Flags. Your favorite color. Blue. Your favorite holiday. Christmas. Your ideal car. G-Wagon. Your favorite comfort food. Oh, that's good. Uh, Seafood. The last movie you saw? The Butler. You relax doing what? Sleeping. Your favorite singer or rapper? Beyonce and Kevin Gates. Your favorite dance song? I don't think I have a favorite dance song. (laughs) What food you eat every week, no matter what? Brussels sprouts. Work out or hit the couch? Both. (laughs) Lindsay Walker, thank you so much for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and to do business with you. And feel free to leave all your social media handles. Absolutely. So yes, please make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. Again, I'm at Lindsay, that's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-A Walker on Instagram. DM me. I will DM you back. I promise it may take me a minute, but I'll do it. Also to further connect with me and learn more about Walker and Associates Media Group, you can visit www.walkerassocmediagroup.com. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.